Greetings gentlemen and ladies, I am the old school game snob and in today's video I'm going to be taking you through my top tier runs for a orb lightning sorceress. I have a build on this character in my, on my channel and you can check that out if you like this character. She ranges somewhere between about 200 and 300 percent magic find depending on what area she's doing. Uh, some areas are harder than others and I like to stack a little bit more resistance and other areas she can get away with 300 and some odd percent magic find no problem. So let's check this out. Let's start things out super duper simple. This is one of the runs where she can stack all the magic finds she wants, gold wrap chance guards, uh, blade of Alibaba, no problems. Uh, this is just not a problem for her. It's super fast, super easy. You probably already all know it. But uh, for those of you who may not, it is the Eldritch the Rectifier who we just killed. He's a unique boss, super unique boss, which has a very good chance of dropping quite a lot of uh, very nice loot. Not everything in the game, but quite a lot of really good stuff can drop from Eldritch. And then, of course, the classic Pindleskin run. And that's it. That's run number one. Uh, repeat as necessary over and over and over again. I have a video on this actually. I did a thousand runs and shared the loot results. Uh, check that out if you want to see a little bit more about what you might find from this run. Oh, and if you're really new, and I kind of want to gear this video towards anybody who's really new, this is Act 5, the Frigid Highlands. You just go to the first waypoint. Uh, Eldritch the Rectifier is right up here. You come back down, you go back to the, to Hargorath. Hargorath? I don't even know how to say that. But you go back down to the city, the town, the little village, and then on to Nilhawk's Temple. What I think I did that all a little bit fast. Let's do that one more time. Frigid Highlands, right? Teleport up just twice. Uh, chain Lightning, just shoot anywhere. It takes them all out. Sometimes Eldritch is lightning enchanted, which means he's a little bit extra tough to lightning, has like, like extra lightning resist. That's okay, we take him out. Once he's out, don't worry about the rest of the stuff. Just back down to Harogoth. Harogoth. And then on to Pindleskin. I like to uh, hit the telekinesis from here, and then you can just get into the waypoint a little faster. Run up to about here, and then line up right around here with your teleport. Teleport in, your mercenary goes running, get your first spell off, and everything should be positioned just right. Chain Lightning takes out everything. Sometimes Pindleskin can be lightning immune. If you see sparks, he may be lightning immune. Oh, come on, Talrashas. How many times am I going to be teased by that? Uh, anyway, that's the run. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to try to break this down a little bit more for anybody who's new, more new to the game and doesn't know these runs off like the, off like the back of their hand or how the saying goes. All right, next up we have the River of Flame on our way to the Chaos Sanctuary. Best way to get there, just teleport straight ahead, full speed ahead. Make sure you have nice fast cast rate or you could get uh, hit midway and taken out. Um, from here we make our way to the to the seals, take out or rather open up the seals. Uh, we want to take out the Grand Vizier of Chaos on the left. He will spawn with his little pack. Take him out. Do, 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 do. This is of course a level 85 area so uh, anything could potentially drop around here. Next seal we take that out. Lord Decis will, Decis, Decis, Decis will spawn somewhere around here. I think he should be right around here with his little pack. And, uh, you know what? I think I'm playing in Nightmare Difficulty. This feels a little bit easier. Yeah, I am. Uh, this is going to be a little bit harder, but you know what? For the sake of a nice, fast tutorial, I'm going to keep this in Nightmare Difficulty. We take out this, and then we kill the Infector of Souls. He is here. Bum, bum, bum. Ba -do -ba -do -ba -do -do -do. I was like, did I get way more powerful? No, Nightmare Difficulty. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we're going to jump back to Hell Difficulty for Diablo. Diablo will spawn. I actually like to stand right here. Wait for him to appear. Just get that static field going. By the time he uh, gets a chance to attack, the static field will already have him down by, you know, half health or whatever. Uh, when it comes to Diablo himself and taking him on, uh, watch out for that. That thing will hit really, really hard, but luckily it's really, really easy to avoid. Uh, when you know it's coming anyway. You just kind of run in one direction and keep going, run in the other direction, keep going. As you can see, it's pretty easy to avoid. Don't stop, because <laughs> like I say, that thing will hit hard. And uh, yeah, anyway, that's uh, Diablo for you. 
Okay, next up we have another level 85 area. This is not on very many people's favorites list, but this is the World Stone Keep. Uh, of course, we get Bale at the end of it, but the World Stone Keep itself is a level 85 area where you can find literally anything in the game. And this character actually does a really good job in this area. For this area, I switch her gear from Magic Find to Resistances to get her ma or Resistances basically all topped up, tippy to top, maxed out as much as possible. This is a, is a dangerous area and you can encounter a variety of things from actually pretty easy things to, you know, uh, Dark Souls and things that'll kill you hard, kill you fast. Getting that lightning resistance up is really important. Having high poison resistance also is really helpful. Um, but yeah, I actually like to just kind of go through this area, uh, not even teleport to the end because a lot of the best stuff will drop literally from these the monsters in the World Stone Keep. So yeah, and like I say, uh, Chain Lightning works really, really well in here, uh, especially since there's so many corners, oftentimes you can just kind of hang back, let Chain Lightning absolutely clear the screen, clear off stuff you can't even see um, above the screen and uh, everywhere else. Um, and yeah, anyway, eventually you'll make your way, of course, to the Throne of Destruction, where you will face Bale. I'll fast forward to that point. Prepare to fast forward! Prepare to fast forward! Fast forward! When making your way down through the World Stone Keep, you may be tempted to teleport to the end. This can be hazardous. There's so many things in the World Stone Keep that can come at you so, so quickly and take you down so, so fast. It's a very high probability location that you can die from quickly teleporting around. Uh, I think I probably died the most in this location from just trying to skip past stuff. So just a, just a word of advice there. It's kind of good to just make your way through on foot, take out the stuff along the way. Uh, of course you do you, but that's, that's what I would do. Uh, Throne of Destruction area. Now there's a couple of options when you get down here. Players like to just straight up teleport right to the uh, what right to the uh, throne chamber which can be fine depending on what's in here right so uh, if you encounter a bunch of bunch of problems like like this is actually pretty packed with monsters right now you might want to you know make your way up a little bit slower and have a little bit of room to maneuver sometimes you'll encounter really easy easy things up there and sometimes well you'll encounter really problematic things like these Death Lords, these guys are, are killers. Their name is no joke. And of course, once you do clear the throne room, Bale will start throwing his minions at you. First wave, super easy. Just get that chain lightning going. They'll be down before you even know uh, what uh, what was there, what you killed. Sometimes they run around really fast though, but uh, yeah, no. That first wave is no problem. <clears throat> The second wave, I like to take quite a ways back, run back quite a ways and just get that chain lightning going. Um, don't specifically cast on one of the monsters because as soon as they die, uh, your chain lightning will stop. It's better to just cast in the middle of the room and that way your chain lightning just goes without any pause whatsoever. No pause is always good. Don't give them a chance to, uh, you know, don't give them a chance to recover from the hit recovery. The more locked up they are in that, generally the better. Uh, yeah, I like, like I say, standing far back. Works pretty well against that group. The next group I find the most uh, tedious, uh, the council group. Again, similar strategy. Just standing back, get the chain lightning going. The problem here is keeping your mercenary alive. Um, and to do that, it's, you know, a game of teleport, teleport, teleport. And uh, we kind of just need to stop them from focus firing on our poor, uh, poor mercenary here. I like to keep him around a little bit longer. I, like to, I actually like to keep him alive. For helping with Bale, it helps quite a bit, and he's down. Wow, that was a tough group. Usually they're not that bad, but this this group seems to have some mods on it that is especially nasty. So, um, yeah. In which case, you know, you can do the whole thing without your mercenary. That's okay. I wouldn't resurrect him for this part, but I will resurrect him for taking on Bale. Just it seems to help. Uh, this next bit is a uh, once again same strategy um the pit lords are pretty good they come at a pretty straight line so instead of chain lightning i just like to use regular lightning and uh yeah but they they, they die they go down real fast this part's usually pretty easy that's one of the easier parts so chain lightning in the case of the uh, or sorry not pit lords the venom lords 
those ones yeah that, that that's a nice part for this character no problem with those ones and then last but not least we have the minions of destruction i kind of like to do the same thing start out with with regular lightning but depending on how they flank uh, can switch over to, to Chain Lightning. It's nice to have the Mercenary for this part because they kind of all line up around him and then you can just kind of uh, spam that uh, spam that Lightning in a nice line. But if they all, you know, fan out, then Chain Lightning can often be better. Anyway, mix it up. Figure out what works. <laughs> yeah, this can uh, go really quickly sometimes, sometimes a little bit longer. And sometimes if you get like super fast burning, fast moving mana burn version of these, just, you know, just don't bother. Uh, you're probably going to die a bunch. Um, yeah, these guys are taking quite a while this time. They're just not really cooperating in terms of positioning. That's why the mercenary can be really nice in this part. Once the mercenary uh, is there to help, things are quite a lot easier. <laughs> As for the Bale component, good to just teleport directly over to where he's standing, hit him with a bunch of static fields, just stay right on top of him, knock, that, knock his health down with static field, and then from there I find that Frozen Orb is pretty much the best way to go. Um, Lightning he seems pretty resistant to, but you know, you can kind of do both if you got the timing right. The problem is all those mana burns just keep coming, and I kind of find it helps to just run back and forth, run back and forth, hopefully stay out of those mana burn fiery things that don't seem to do any damage, or maybe they do, I don't know, but they burn all your mana away, so... Yep, back and forth, back and forth. It seems to be the best. He'll probably summon up a clone of himself, which is kind of annoying, but if he does, Chain Lightning can be pretty good for taking down him and his clone, because it bounces back and forth between them and does extra damage, so... Yep. This part usually requires quite a few mana potions, really depending on how good you do your back and forth part. Yeah, so now we got his clone there, and if they're in a good position, they can just kind of spam chain lightning back and forth between them. And uh, watch out for my poor mercenary, try to keep him alive, because I'm cheap and I don't like to have to resurrect him. <laughs> um, keeping an eye on Bale's health here, because I've got my Blade of Alibaba in my offhand, so when he's about to die, I just switch to my Blade of Alibaba, and that way I can get more magic find on the Killing Blow. And that's it. That's Bale. All right. Oh, I'd like to interrupt this video just for a second to thank you lovely, lovely, fantastic Rockstar subscribers who have uh, subscribed to the channel. I really, really appreciate the support, and thank you very much. Okay, next up we have a run that I really like. This is found from the outer cloister of act one this is another level 85 area uh you just teleport down and follow the road uh one of the forks of the road it'll fork in two directions one of the forks will lead you to the pit the other direction will lead you off to another area so if you go the wrong way just follow the road back and find the pit this is the pit in the pit, uh, I'll have no problem with my Blade of Alibaba. There will be Lightning and there will be Cold Immunities. There will be the Dark Stalkers and the Dark Archers and some Fire Immunes and stuff. But basically, uh, the Archers need to be killed with Cold and the uh, and the Swords... Dark arch, well, I don't actually know if they're using Swords. The melee version of them <laughs> needs to be killed with Lightning. They, they, they kind of look similar, so they're a little bit hard to tell apart. So that's how I kind of tell them apart. If they have a melee weapon, kill them with lightning. If they have a bow, kill them with, uh, kill them with the uh, cold. Not with kindness, no. Got to kill them with actual devastating elemental force. <laughs> anyway, the pit's good. And like I say, it's another level 85 area. So anything can actually drop from these, you know, Act 1 monsters, which seems kind of weird but hey that's that's the way the game is there's a few level 85 areas in the game and we're going to take a look at a, at a couple of them in this video but i actually have another video which uh, covers all of the level 85 areas and you can decide which one you like best for yourself but what i like about the pit number one is that all the monsters in it are really low on hit points and so they will die quick <laughs> they will die super 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 quick and there will be a lot of the either champion or unique spawn packs uh, I think somewhere like six to eight unique spawn packs something like that and of course unique spawn packs 
are higher level than regular monsters by two to three levels. And that basically means that's what makes it possible for them to drop some of the most, uh, 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 well, difficult to find items in the game, the highest level items in the game, I guess you could say. So yeah, like I say, anything can drop from, from this area, from either the champion or the unique spawn packs. Um, yeah, anyway, so this is it. It's not a very big area. That's also another nice thing about it. And there is a second level to it. Maybe we'll just skip forward to the second level. And the second level has a super chest in it as well. Let's just let's just skip to that part. Well, actually, no. We'll take out this. We'll take out this uh, unique pack here because you just never know when something good is going to drop. And that's kind of the fun part about farming these end game areas because yeah, you could get like an absolutely amazing drop. Um, yeah, yeah, just like anything at all could happen. That's pretty fun. <laughs> But this is layer level two. It's always exactly the same configuration, which is also nice. Ooh, an Etinax. That's a good thing. And a Colossus Blade, really? <laughs> he almost dropped a grandfather. Ah, oh, that would have been a cool, cool find for this video. Um, the Etinax, though, I, I believe if it, if it rolls five sockets, it was really, really quite good, even with three sockets. But we'll see in just a minute what that's all about. But down here, it's a very small area, but it has like two to three, and I think even four. Um, unique or champion packs so just like in a really quick and short amount of time you have all of these all of these draws this area can be a bit dangerous though um, if you get the unique archer packs though they are the most dangerous of the of what you'll find down here just because they have sometimes some mods that can do a lot of damage quickly so you really got to watch out for those guys um, but otherwise nothing down here is really too dangerous it's just those those archers uh, that spawn with some, yeah, nasty, nasty affixes. Um, but then down here, there is always the super chest. So we grab that super chest. And uh, let's see what, let's see what that axe was all about, that Etten axe with uh, four open sockets. Okay, well, I guess it can oh, spawn with a three to five open sockets. So now I've found a three and a four, and I haven't yet found a five open socket. Anyway, this is the pit, and that's a nice, fun, fast area. It's super easy to find each time, and there's, like I say, very low hit point monsters in it, as long as you watch out for the occasional nasty surprise from those unique dark archers, uh, you should be pretty good. Alrighty, let's go to the Lost City in Act 2. In the Lost City area of Act 2, there will be a hatchway. You just gotta teleport around the map until you see a little purple spot appear on your, on your mini-map, your not quite mini map, but let's say maxi map. Uh, the ancient tunnels is where we're headed. In the ancient tunnels, very much like the pit, you will encounter level 85 monsters. Uh, champion packs spawn two levels higher. Unique pan unique packs spawn three levels higher, and it is from the unique packs that you can get any any item in the game. Of course, the champion packs can drop almost any item in the game. Um, and uh, the Ancient Tunnels is nice because it actually doesn't have any cold immune monsters and so I think a lot of people like it because it's fairly easy to farm, fairly safe to farm. Um, there are, I would say, less nasty surprises than the pit, although I honestly think the pit is usually pretty easy. It's just those, like I say, those occasional dark archers that spawn with, with some nasty, nasty surprises. Um, but yeah, this is the Ancient Tunnels, a very, also a very good spot with, uh, I think, six to eight, something like that, unique or champion spawn packs. Not a very big area, just a single level, so you can just kind of clear it out pretty fast. Uh, the only part that slows it down a tiny bit is in finding the Ancient Tunnels each time, though that doesn't usually take too long. It's not in a fixed location, kind of like the pit. You can always follow the road to the pit. The Ancient Tunnels is kind of in a random spot, so... Um, yeah, the uh, monsters in here can be a little bit hard on your mercenary. I do find myself pulling him back quite frequently and feeding him a lot of health potions to keep him alive. Um, but overall, if you kind of just play it safe down here, you're, you're pretty good. Let's not spend forever down here. Let's instead check out another area. So that is the Ancient Tunnels, also a very good spot. 
The uh, thoroughness part of me uh, couldn't neglect mentioning the super chest, which is also always somewhere in the ancient tunnels. Okay, now we'll check out the next spot. Okay, next on this list we have the Durance of Hate. This is a Mephisto boss run, Act 3. Durance of Hate is the waypoint. To find level 3 of the Durance, basically what you want to do is look at where your entrance exits. And if the exit point, as you can see on the map, is here, you just kind of want to head character left, stage left, and just kind of teleport along the wall until you find the entrance to Durance level 3, of course. There it is, and from here you just kind of go straight ahead past the uh, portal and Mephisto will be right there as usual. We take him down with some static field, and then we do the Mephisto dance. A little bit left, and a little bit right, and a little bit left. He's quite resistant to lightning, so if you are running the lightning orb source, uh, the uh, orb is the way to go here. Switching, of course, to the Alibaba Blade for the killing blow, and that's Mephisto. Uh, do not forget to check the super chest in the back. That can sometimes drop some good stuff. And when you're done that, let me just grab that one. And when you're done that, head on over to the portal, and uh, that way when you exit and come back into the game, you'll be immediately beside a waypoint, and you can go right back to Durance level 2. If you end up uh, at the Curist docks, you have to run a little bit further, and that adds, you know, 10 seconds on to your run time. So just a quick little trick there. All right, next up, we have the Andariel run. Now, if it's not too late for you already, I highly recommend quest bugging Andariel. She'll drop much better loot. The way to quest bug Andariel is basically this. In a nutshell, after you kill her, your first playthrough, uh, and you portal back to town, don't talk to anybody, only talk to Warov. Uh, sit, go east after you talk to Warov, and then as soon as you get to Act 2, again, don't talk to anybody, just save and exit right there. And that will quest bug Andariel. The way you can tell if Andariel's quest bugged or not is uh, if she's quest bugged, she'll never drop gold. And if you, if you notice that she's never dropping gold, then yeah, you've probably got her quest bugged. Um, the way I like to do the Catacombs Level 2, uh, is basically kind of similar to Mephisto. I pick a wall and I just kind of stick to that wall and I follow the wall um, until I hit to level three and then I again just kind of pick a wall, follow the wall. It's kind of the um, it's kind of the low thought way, the brainless way of doing it. I think there are some uh, map hack techniques. I don't know them. <laughs> so there you go. I, I confess I do not know how to map hack Andariel's uh, uh, run in my mind, so I just pick a wall and I follow it, and it gets me there pretty darn quick, so I don't worry about it too very much. Um, let's see here, alright, okay, there we go, not too bad. Um, Andariel just, just straight, straight through the wall, of course. Uh, her minions can be a little bit problematic, and uh, otherwise, just, you know, the usual static field, take her down, and then run around and, uh, yeah. Watch out for those minions because actually those are the guys that kind of can be a little bit dangerous in this area. All those little lightning-y things and if they get like a nasty affix spawned with them. But yeah, for the most part, Andariel is pretty, pretty not too difficult. Uh, especially once her, her guards are down. Um, she does have a pretty good poison attack, so uh, if you get your poison resistance up, that's helpful. If you don't have good poison resistance and you're having any trouble with her poison, just get some antidote potions from, um, uh, from, uh, from, what the hell is her name now? I forget. <laughs> uh, one of the nice things about, ooh, what could that be? Unique ring. Could that be something good? I don't know. Do I dare to hope for a stone of Jordan? I do dare to hope. I hope every single time. Wouldn't that be a fun thing to find? Ravenfrost is also pretty cool. Okay. Andariel is a cool run. And like I say, she's uh, a cool run because you can quest bug her and she drops better items than, than well, without quest bugging her. Uh, and also, she is the best place to find Stone of Jordan Ring. Not in Hell difficulty, of course. The best place to find that is in Nightmare difficulty. But, yep, that's uh, that's where you would go to look for the Stone of Jordan. Not, not in my case this time, but oh well. Um, okay, what else? Now, this is not a run I usually do, but it is a run, which has a level 85 area, quick to access. You, of course, head to Travancol, and then you can just teleport straight down. And there will be two, um, two, two stairways. One here, 
and one right here every single time, so they're easy to find. These are also level 85 areas. Um, they can be a little bit dangerous, depending on what greets you right at the door, but these are level 85 areas. And they may have one or two, I think, uh, unique champions or unique spawns or champion packs within. I don't really like to go to this area. It's kind of dangerous. Um, so yeah, no, maybe not maybe not a top tier area, but easy to find. Uh, the River of Flame is also a level 85 area. If you have any trouble in the Chaos Sanctuary, you can also uh, kill around the... Uh, just around the River of Flame. It's actually a lot friendlier, usually. Random monsters spawn, you don't always get exactly the same thing, and some things might be easier to take down, some things might be more uh, more difficult. So if you don't like what you get, you can exit the game, reset your area, and maybe you'll get like an easier run. This is a pretty good area, actually. There's you know quite a few uh, unique or champion spawns that appear here. I don't know exactly how many, but it seems like there's quite a few. And uh, yeah, it's not too difficult to handle for the most part, for the most part, for the most part. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, last on this list that I would recommend for this build of character, like I say, this is the guide for the lightning orb source, um, is the, the, the Moo Moo Farm. Uh, and actually, the Moo Moo Farm has a nice little... Actually, the, you know what? Yeah, no, I think this will be it. This will be the last one. The nice thing about this run is that also, actually, on your way to the Moo Moo Farm, you can take out Griswold, you can also take out Rakanishu, and these guys actually have some uh, decent chances of dropping some pretty good items. Not obviously end game highest level stuff, but still some pretty good items, and there's lots, lots of champions and, uh, and um, unique spawns in uh, Tristram here, so yeah, you can just kind of take these things out on the way, and Griswold actually has a really good chance of dropping uh, all sorts of good stuff. I don't remember exactly what. Not the highest level stuff, but still all sorts of good stuff. And he has actually a really good chance of... What is killing me right now? I don't even know. Um... Yeah, anyway, uh, so to open the cow, was it the archers? I always, the archers. You know what's funny about this game is that you don't see the arrows very easily. Do you remember in Diablo Classic? I don't know if you played Diablo Classic if you're watching this video, but you could see the arrows a lot more easily. I can't see them that well. <laughs> I felt them, but I, I couldn't see them. Um, let's see here. I've also noticed that with the, um, oh, I forget what they're called now, the, uh, the Horodrum Ancients with their little black magic attack you can't you can't see it anymore you just suddenly start getting hit and you don't know what's hitting you uh anyway there's ritz leg if you've never opened the cow level before and like i say this guide is kind of geared towards maybe some new players who don't know everything off by heart yet so you need ritz leg you also need a tomb of town portal you need to have completed the difficulty that you're opening the cow portal in you need to have, need to have killed bail uh, and then uh, you drop your leg and your uh, book into the cube, and that opens up the cow level. And then the cow level is a good uh, farming spot as well. So this character does pretty well against cows. Uh, a pure blizzard sorceress would do better, but she does pretty good. I would put her at about a medium for this area. And the cows are cool because they can drop um, bases, for example, uh, since there's so many just like normal monsters. Normal, normal monsters tend to drop base, non-magical, non-rare items. Um, and some, so, so something like a, like a four-socketed monarch shield or maybe like a, a nice uh, pole arm for your mercenary or something like that would be good. Um, yeah, like I say, this character is medium at this area. The blizzard sorceress would definitely be the way to go if you really want to farm this area fast. But she can do it. She's all right. Anyway, that uh, those that was I think that concludes my list here uh, of of the top tier farming areas for a um, frozen orb lightning sorceress. I hope you have all enjoyed this uh, video, and I'll see you all hopefully in the next one. All right, have a great day.